Greetings, everyone. Bench to the back welcome. I'll let you unscramble that. Well, what I want to do today is play with an unbiased amplifier output stage and add to it and see if I can make it sound pretty good. Now, I played with this in another video a while back, but I wanted to see if I can uh, make this circuit into something good, make a stereo amplifier. Something I'm sure that wouldn't appease the hi-fi nuts, but, you know, something that works. Well, before I get into that, a couple things I wanted to mention here. I got the new stack of boards here, the John Audio Tech 501 amplifier, redesigned boards. Been working with uh, Ed on this. Really appreciate his efforts there. Oh, we got the little uh, <laughs> happy chip guy there. Yeah, the uh, first board uh, had some issues, so I've been working with Ed back and forth in uh, changing the design. He even made these here with all the uh, transistors coming out one side, kind of a, a linear model, I guess you could say, where the main design has the transistors coming off either side here, which is the uh, original plan I had. But yeah, I'll have to get some components together. Might have to put in an order with DigiKey, yeah, get one of these boards put together and test it out. And if everything goes well, hopefully that'll be the final design and uh, we can take it from there. Also a big thanks to new Patreon supporters and my regular Patreon supporters. Had some new people join. Kind of balanced out some of the people that left. But hey, I'm not going to beg for support. Really appreciate the people that do support. And if you think my channel is worthy of support, it's up to you if you want to support it or not. But I am beginning to add some content to Patreon that only supporters can see. Though most of the stuff I put up, like the JAT501 information, will be publicly available. Alright, so let's get going on our little project here. So what I have is an op amp driving an output stage, a push-pull output stage. But you see here both bases are connected together. So what's going to happen when the output signal swings positive, this transistor will turn on but only after this voltage reaches around 0.6 volts. And same thing when it goes negative. It's not going to turn on this transistor until it reaches about negative 0.6 volts. So there's a dead area in the signal, and that's called crossover distortion. So the way it's set up here, it's not going to sound very good. And I'll build out a signal and show you what that sounds like. Now this schematic doesn't show all the components. I'll show the schematic with all the components at the end of the video when we get a finished circuit, but this is just here for explaining. Okay, I set up a little circuit here on the breadboard, connected it to the music player and the preamp. Now let's see what it sounds like, or here anyway. Well, I think I should pursue this no further. That sounds really good. I think that would appease the audiophile crowd. Yeah, what's the point? I mean, that sounds really great. If your ears are screwed up, that is. But anyhow, uh, let's take a look at a sine wave and see what's going on there. Well, that sounded like thrash metal. Leave it the way it is. Anyhow, let's uh, crank that up. There you see, we get a nice sine wave, except for this flat area in the middle. And that's where the transistors are not turned on, because we have to have that plus 6 minus... Or, what did I just say? Let's say that again. Plus 6.6 6 volts and minus... 0.6 volts for the negative side. So yeah, let's see if we can fix that. 
Okay, so I made a change here. Didn't change any components. I just moved the negative feedback from this point to the output of the amplifier. And let's see what it looks like now. Wow, we have a perfect looking waveform now. But what does it sound like? Let me hook the speaker up and we'll come right back. Telling of driver got the train. Ignorance will strike again as darkness tries to hide the rose that goes to bloom among them. I don't know how much of that I can play, but it sounds fine. However, I wonder if there's still a little bit of a crossover notch. Okay, let's zoom in on this thing. So I'll turn this up. Yeah, you can see a little bitty notch there, but it's so small. You can see we're into the noise. See how you know, kind of noisy that is? Because we're into the noise. And that notch is just a little beyond the noise, so it's nothing significant really. Now I'm going to play some piano music because I noticed that type of music you can kind of hear the fuzziness that the notch creates. If it's even audible it might be so small that you can't hear it. But let's see. Yeah I can hear kind of a buzz to the notes. I have the sound turned way down. So let me put the mic up to the tweeter here. I don't know if that comes over, but there's just a little bit of fuzziness to the notes. Well, I want to see if I can clean that up a little bit, so let me try something here. Okay, so what I've done is add a resistor between the base and the output. So at the point where these transistors are turned off, signal from the op amp is going to the speaker. And that's a small amount of signal. The op amp is not able to supply a lot of current to an 8 ohm load and we have to work within its current limits so I used a 470 ohm resistor. However, that was enough to get rid of that buzz. I don't know if you can hear it or not. I mean, unless you like to sit with your ear in the tweeter, I mean, you can't really hear anything. Sounds pretty good. Okay, let's take a look at it here. Let's zoom in. Yeah, there's a bit of a notch, but you can see it's almost lost in the noise floor here. In fact, because of the noise, the scope's having trouble triggering but I don't want to decrease the noise level because I want to show that relative to the notch and to the ear you just can't hear that okay so we're obviously using negative feedback to cheat here and correct that signal which is against my philosophy for building an amplifier you should build an amplifier that has as low as distortion as possible before closing in the global loop but again, you know, this is kind of just for fun. Now, because we're using negative feedback to correct that, the amplifier will be sending a corrected, what I call a corrective signal to the output stage. So measuring from the output of the op amp, there you go. So what's happening, it has the normal part of the signal, but then it has to jump really quick to correct for that dead zone and because it's not perfect there is that little bit of a notch I'm using the LM4562 because it has a fast slew rate and it would correct that quite well I'm also using the 4562 because it tends to clip symmetrically which some of the other op amps I tried don't but there you go you can see what's actually happening there Let's see what kind of output power we're getting here. 
it's not going to be a real powerful amp or anything, but uh, running at plus minus six volts. So we get nice symmetrical clipping. No weird things or oscillations or anything. That's nice. So we'll tune out clipping right about there. Put some waveforms on the screen and get a measurement. 2.98 volts RMS squared divided by 8. 1.1 watts. And that's not too bad. Some of the better chips will get around a watt and a half. So, you know, we're not doing too bad for such a simple amplifier. Now I'm curious as to the distortion. Okay, now we're looking at distortion, and I do apologize for the glare on the screen. I'm shooting daytime. We're getting a lot of reflection here. I got these windows around. I need some darkening blinds. But anyway, 1 kilohertz fundamental, 4 0.5 kilohertz signal that's at 1% of this of course this goes way off the screen but look how clean this is I mean there's some that change due to differences in noise because it has to acquire every so often because it's collecting a lot of data but this is cleaner than a lot of stuff I test <laughs> that's pretty amazing now, the amplifier is set close to clipping, and because crossover distortion is a very small signal type thing, I'm going to take this test at a much lower level. I'll have to turn the amplitude up on the scope here and the signal down and see if we get some more notches or not. I would suspect that we would. Okay, so now I set the signal level to like 500 millivolts. And again, the little pilot signal I put in there at 1%, just, it's just a reference so I can compare the nodes to see how much distortion there is. And it's still pretty small. You can see some notches that stay there, but there's still a small fraction. You know, this is not bad at all. I mean, it, it meets the specs of a decent amplifier. I mean, maybe not hi-fi or anything, but makes a usable amplifier okay so what I'll do now is make a stereo amplifier because I have another channel on the chip there because of course it's a dual op amp and I have to adjust things move things around and also make it work for single supply because I know a lot of people would want to be able to run it on batteries since it won't use a lot of current sitting idle it's be pretty good for battery use now keep in mind this is set up on one of these breadboards so i can't do fancy star grounding and all that stuff so yeah i mean it's pretty amazing what i'm getting just from setting it up on a breadboard here okay it's been stereoized not sterilized stereoized so i got the uh voltage divider circuit that sets the input to half supply voltage so our output is at half supply voltage and I added the output coupling capacitors wired all the stuff up big mess of wires bypass the valve set all phasers for stun hoping this thing isn't a big oscillator so I'm bringing all the speaker returns over here I probably should have moved everything down, but I got some of the output stuff close to this input stuff. Hopefully it doesn't oscillate, but oh well, got all the speakers hooked up. And I uh, got the power supply set. Just using this one side now because it's single supply. I heard a thump in the speakers. It's not drawing a crazy amount of current. Let's turn the preamp on. Uh-oh, I didn't hear a little thump sound. Let's get the music going. Okay, music is going. No sound. Turn it up here. 
<laughs> oh, that's better yet. This thing is improving. Well, we obviously have some sort of problem here. I'll get the meter out here. Check voltages. Might now have something connected properly here. Okay, I see what happened here. I left out these capacitors. They're in the negative feedback. They connect from the negative feedback divider to ground. What they do is keep the DC amplification or the DC gain to 1. So there's essentially no amplification with DC. The reason for that, well, we have a voltage, another voltage divider that connects to the inputs which sets the voltage to 6 volts, or one-half the supply voltage, because we want the outputs to be set at one-half the supply voltage because we're running in a single supply mode. And we don't want to amplify that DC voltage, so we need those capacitors there. So yeah, it's just an extra component. But it works now. We got stereo. Okay, what's wrong here? how much of that I can play but yeah it's uh, working let's uh, throw the piano music up and make sure it uh, sounds good without any of that staticky noise Seems to sound fine by me. Let's see what the uh, idle current draw is. So it's only drawing 10 milliamps because there's no bias in the output stage. I mean, we have two channels going here. So it's really just the current the chip draws and a little bit for the voltage divider circuit we have. So super duper battery friendly. Look how much gain these have, these transistors. 364. One of them measure 475. They're just these MJE 3055s and 2955s. The old ones they have are under 100. That's small signal gain. Of course, the gain will be lower at higher currents, but I'd have to test exactly what they are at higher currents, but these would be ideal for the circuit. If you get the new high gain ones, not sure if it has a suffix or not. I don't know if you can see that. Hard to read that. But anyway, uh, let me wrap this up. I get a schematic drawn, and uh, yeah, the uh, Class B unbiased stereo amplifier project seemed to work out. All right, so here is the schematic of the unbiased amplifier. Now this is just one channel, of course. The other channel's the same, so I didn't, you know, want to draw the whole thing again. But anyway, so yeah, it's just pretty much the op amp and the output stage, the resistor feeding forward some of the output signal from the op amp when the transistors are off, and of course we're pulling feedback here uh, we have this up here because we need to generate that one-half supply voltage. Kind of like a virtual ground in a way for the output stage. So if you're running it at 12 volts, you'll get 6 volts here. And we don't want to amplify that 6 volts. So we have to have that capacitor there. So the DC gain is 1, so we get 6 volts here. 
So when the amplifier is not producing a signal, it centers at 6 volts. And of course we need to remove that. It sounds kind of strange that we have to make that but then remove it because we don't want DC in our speakers. But, you know, if this was at 0 volts, this would only, you know, amplify the positive half of the waveform and it would sound crappy and distorted like I demonstrated. So yeah, that's why we need that. Uh, the only thing I didn't put on here is the low pass RF filter on the input. You might want to add that if you're going to actually build this thing and make an amplifier out of it. Kind of optional, I guess. But uh, yeah, I guess that's about all I want to say on this. Yeah, you can run it. it. You'd have to check the gain of these transistors and make sure the op amp can drive it. If you want to run it at higher voltage with like 4 ohms to make sure you have enough current. But yeah, they got these odd uh, high gain transistors. The MJE3055, for some reason the gain is extremely high, at least at low signal levels. I don't know what they are at, you know, say like 1 or 2 amps, but... And that's something I have to take a look at. So there you go, the unbiased amplifier actually sounds pretty good to me. And, and looking at the spectrum analyzer, there's really nothing there that would stand out to be noticeable. Like, you know, it's not high fi or anything, but you, know, you can make a neat little amplifier that doesn't draw a lot of current. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.